Sherman's tractor there, and there you can see the crest of the city of Leeds. To the uh, town I'm going there, Sentinel, I believe. I remember the years here shortly as well. These steam wagons, uh, the fire, the boiler, is ran by the driver's feet, which is why the air conditioning system is those large windows which open at the front. Steam wagon will uh, take an hour and a half to get up enough steam to develop power. Uh, they're good for long distances, they're very good for short haulage like Tarmac Company in Wolverhampton uh, supply the black country from Tarmac in the day and breweries use them a lot in big cities as well. And this could well be Ruby from York. Whistle. Thank you very much, sir. Carry on. Clayton Shuttleworth, built in Lincoln, that's Louise. Built in 1906, this machine. The design of these engines didn't change from 1850 to 1942 when the last one was built. And these engines can run on coal, that's if you're rich, straw, wood, and during the Second World War, when fuel was short, they had a bit of a comeback, but then the diesel engines gradually took over, which meant the death knell of steam engines. A lot of them went into decline, a lot were rescued, and we see them here. 1923 machine and Marshall the Wayfarer. Mr. and Mrs. Hutchinson from Hexham on this one. So the Marshall built in Gainsborough, in Lincolnshire, in a wonderful factory, brick built, four floors, right in the middle of Gainsborough. It's still there. It now sells toiletries and ladies' knickers. It's a supermarket. Great shame. Marshalls, of course, went on to build a lot of tractors after their steam engines. Fowler roller, quite rare. This is squash. Mr. Frank of Stokesley with a 1927 Fowler. So Meath County Council, will there be questions after where Meath County Council was based? Oh, you see, that Fowler, no space for the, uh, the crest. This is a borough built in Thetford in Norfolk, this is Rajar. The 1913 borough, a lot of them built at that time went to help out with that little bit of unpleasantness the other side of the channel and they were used to haul big guns and when they came back uh, Kempton Park Racecourse was filled with steam wagons and steam engines which just weren't needed because the diesel engine had moved on and a lot of steam engines were just left surplus to requirements the surprise the Rockcliffe family from York with a 1934 Marshall. Splendid machine. And you can wave as well. Say hello. Well, that came suddenly, wasn't there, last night? 
The galloping horses. This is a bow, a lightning, lightning two. I'm by the Preston family of Hutton Rugby. Is that Jamie Preston? Could be. Lightning two. Big, big engine weighs. 19 tons, 18 tons. Heavy. So you can imagine that pulling six or seven trailers around the countryside. The last showman's engine that actually worked for the purpose designed was one by, owned by Pat Collins, legendary Walsall showman, who worked the Birmingham Onion Fair with it. He brought tears to the eyes at the end of the show. Mr. Gaines Bowl with a restored McLaren. This was found in the bed of a river in New Zealand. What Mr. Gaines Bowl was doing in the bed of a river in New Zealand, I do not know. Well, yeah. But he found that and restored it to good condition. There's a big engine in front, Mickey. Just, just steady on. Now, another marshal. And you can see on the front of that machine the crest, and that is the crest of the Duchy of Cornwall, because it worked in the States in the southwest first, and then moved to Essex, and became an Essex girl, and worked on the Temple Estates. The Temple Estates of go past Stansted Airport and turn right, and you'll find the Temple Estate, you'll find a little village called Cressing Temple. And that engine there is named as part of the Temple Estate. Whitby Urban District Council, those are the days, disappeared in 1974, swallowed up by Scarborough, and they still haven't forgiven them. Sentinel steam wagon, in good condition, showing no livery, doesn't want to, it doesn't have to. Road owners in early Victorian times hated these big steam engines. And if you went up a toll road from Liverpool to Prescott, I'm at a loss as to know why you'd want to do that. If you were driving a horse carriage, the fee was four shillings. If you were driving a steam locomotive, it was 48 shillings. A lot of money. Noah's Ark, where the anim animals went in two by two. So that was a ride where you'd have two dolphins, two chickens, two lions, and things like that, going round and round and up and down, instead of a galloping horse. The Turner Brothers with Yorkshiremen. Going to Burrell. We're all built 340 of these big Sherman's in. And this one built in 1911. The dog is called Cammy, which is short for Camshaft. Cammy, say hello. Big heavy haulage loco that used used to pull big loads around the country. It wasn't only the road owners in Victorian times that hated these engines. In 1934, the government imposed a tax of £100 a year on that engine just to go on the road. In 1934, £100. Goodness me, that's a lot.
Hinkley Rural District Council. Pride of the road. Avling and Porter. Road roller. Tiger. Now there's a story behind this engine, but what happened in Thailand stays in Thailand. Now you make your own stories up, and they will do. So that is a Spring, Springfield, a Kelly Springfield built in Ohio, 1916, and in the middle of that lot there's an engine, uh, and when it's in steam, the engine provides the power to steer, so that's very, very rare. There's only one left. There's only one in this country, that'll do it for me. There's only one in this country, things we do for you at Master. We have Black Vest coming through, 1899. A machine which is older than some of my fillings. A marshal owned by the Killian family of Driffield. And as you can see, we only use the best smokeless fuel here at Nassau. Just to confuse the U-boats on the River Ewer.